Hey, welcome to Church of the Shepherd. My name is Danny Leibarger. I'm the campus pastor here at our church and just excited and honored that you would tune in to join us in worship here today. Wherever it is that you might be uh, tuning in, we're just honored that you would do so. And today we have a cool opportunity to have our lead pastor, John Spalding, continue a ser sermon series we are all excited about, uh, titled Into the Wilderness, talking about how God can often use and draw us into the wilderness to draw us out into something even better than we maybe imagined possible. And so he's going to be preaching about that today. We're going to have an opportunity to join together in song led by our worship leaders, Mary, Jason, and Brad, and just be able to sing and join in that way. But friends, we're excited to come together in worship wherever it is that we are. And as we prepare to do so, I'll invite you to go to God with me in prayer. God, we're so honored and excited to be your people, uh, to be people that are known and loved by you. And we just ask that today as we worship, you would reveal more truth about who we are, uh, how you love us, and how you're shaping us to be your people. Okay, I pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Keep 
God in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart.
good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. When peace like a river Pastor John Spaulding, and I want to welcome you to the wilderness right now as we enter into the wilderness. I'm sure all of us are kind of feeling that way once in a while of being in that wilderness kind of experience. Now there's something though about the wilderness that's mystical and alluring and enticing. Uh, we've created national parks and so that we can escape there and enter into those places that we can camp or, or just spend time there. It holds a mystery of life that unfolds. Sometimes we might even imagine living there for a while. In its beauty, in its solitude, it seems to invite us. It's all good until, until you find yourself stuck there with no way out. Kind of like dreaming of that day of not needing to go into work or that day of just being able to be home for a couple days with nothing going on and nowhere to go until you guessed it, you're stuck there. <laughs> when we get stuck in the wilderness, stuck in a place in our life, stuck in an emotional state or stuck in a thought process or stuck in any way, the only thing we want in those moments is out. And maybe you have discovered the more stuck you are, the more you struggle to get out, the more stuck you become. It's kind of frustrating in those moments. We feel alone, we get anxious, and we work ourselves up into a good old-fashioned meltdown, and at the end of which, we're still stuck. Maybe you're feeling that way right now, stuck in the wilderness stuck in the unknown, stuck in needing someone or something to come and transform your condition so that you can be free. Take heart today. You are not the only one 
stuck in that wilderness. You're not alone. There are plenty of us right there with you. And know this, you're not the first to be there and you won't be the last. There are gonna be plenty of other folks there. And know also this point, that transformation that needs to happen so that we can be free from all of this is not a change in your situation or my situation, it's a change in you, it's a change in me. As long as you and I remain unchanged, we'll remain stuck. We'll never find our way out. Just like our hearts and minds are changed when we interact with the beauty of the wilderness and when we interact with the solitude of that wilderness, our hearts and minds and soul are only transformed when we interact with the wilderness that's around us right now in the places that we find ourselves stuck in. You know, God's word is filled with wilderness encounters. Perhaps the greatest wilderness adventure ever told is the one that happens with the people of Israel when they found themselves escaping their time of slavery in Egypt. In fact, there's a whole book written about it in the Old Testament. It's called Exodus because it explains their exodus out of Egypt into the Promised Land. The book tells how it took them 40 years, 40 years to make a journey that should have taken them 10 days. Now I know this makes room for all kinds of bad jokes. Must have been a man leading because he wouldn't stop and ask for directions kind of jokes. And yes, it was a man leading, it was Moses, but it wasn't that Moses wasn't asking for direction. It was that everyone else had their own ideas about how they should be traveling together, what they should be doing, and even what God should be doing. It took them a long time to learn, while I hope we're able to hear today, that when you're in the wilderness, God draws us from self-reliance to relying on God. Did you hear that? They were just like us. They found themselves stuck in the wilderness and they kept trying to find their own way out, doing their own thing at their own pace. They had a hard time learning to trust and rely upon God. Even though God was present with them, the whole time they kept insisting on doing it their own way. Here's what they're stuck in the wilderness looked like for them. I mean, they journeyed to Egypt in a time of famine because there was food there for them, and they became so great in number that Pharaoh got fearful of them, and so he enslaved them to keep them in line. And as slaves, they were, it was difficult, they suffered, they were beaten, they were oppressed, and, and they cried out to God, and God heard their cries. And so God sent Moses and Aaron who came to get their freedom, and through a series of plagues and God miracles, Pharaoh released them. God used Moses to lead them so they could escape Pharaoh and, and, and allowed Moses to part the Red Sea so they could cross over on dry ground and then swallowed up Pharaoh's chariots. And now, now they're in the wilderness. They've gotten out of their past, but they can't see the future and they're whining. You know, we're, we're hungry, we're thirsty. Why did we follow you to begin with? Let's go back to Egypt. At least we had food there to, to eat. It wasn't really that bad. Uh, they might have even been saying things like, you know, are we there yet? Kind of like some of my family vacations when my kids were little. Sounds like me sometimes even now. When I don't understand what God is doing or I can't see God at work, we know that feeling, don't we? When we can't see the future, when we, when we can't see what God's up, up to, we lose hope. And even the power of a miracle, even the presence of God seems distance then. And this is the key to our stuckness. When there is no vision or stamina for where God is leading, we are stuck. They needed a change, not just a change of scenery. They were not just stuck in the physical wilderness, they were stuck in their relationship with God, their vision of God, their view of their own lives, their desires to live life the way they wanted to live it. They were stuck there. The Israelites had left Egypt, but they were still trying to take a lot of Egypt with them. They were not recognizing their new reality and, and 
they had taken on some of those customs of Egypt. They'd even taken some of the gods of their time there, their idol worship, and, and they weren't ready to let go of those expectations. They weren't willing to let go of their God substitutes, their addictions, their petty idols, their comforts. They had grown attached to some of those things. And even though they were fraught with difficulties, they hung on. What about you? I mean, have you noticed that some of the things in your life that you really are discovering you were more dependent upon than you wanted to admit? Maybe it's food you were craving. I mean, I just love some greasy French fries again or maybe the security of a job, or, or maybe the uncertainty of investments and how you counted on that, or, or maybe just being with people, or maybe it's the little thought things that you thought that you were in control of and now you've discovered you're not. I mean, right now you're having to l learn how to live life in a whole new way maybe ordering groceries online for the first time or wondering where your next roll of toilet paper is gonna come from. You've had to reimagine how to live your life. I mean, even in ministry here at the church, we've had to reimagine re -imagine how we're living our life together. I mean, we are doing groups online, messages online, sharing the sacrament online, how to be the church when we can't rush in and do something or hold someone or fix it. It's in these moments of wilderness living that we begin to discover who we really are. We begin to realize that in these moments when so much is taken away that there is one thing that is constant, never changing, always present, always near, always listening, always reaching, God. It's exactly at that moment that we begin to know this truth. We don't realize that God is all we need until God, till he is all that we have. This is the truth that the Israelites started to figure out. And it comes to them when they are hungry. In Exodus chapter 16, they have been whining and complaining to Moses, and here's what happens. Moses instructed Aaron, tell the whole company of Israel, come near to God. He's heard your complaints. And when Aaron gave out the instructions to the whole company of Israel, they turned to face the wilderness. And there it was, the glory of God visible in the cloud. God spoke to Moses, I've listened to the complaints of the Israelites, now tell them, at dusk you will eat meat, at dawn you'll eat your fill of bread, and you'll realize that I am God, your God. See, God is wanting to meet their need, but more than that, God is wanting to change them. I'm going to give you meat and bread, not just so you can have food to eat, but so that you can realize that I am God, your God. God is letting them know I am what you need. I am all that you need, and you have me. I'll provide food for you. When you have me, you're not alone in the wilderness. When you have me, there is someone who hears your prayers and acts on your behalf. When you have me, I can transform your current situation. God could have said, maybe you didn't notice me in the plagues and miracles that set you free, but that was me. Maybe you didn't notice me when I parted the Red Sea, Still me. Maybe you didn't notice me in the pillar of fire at night and the pillar of cloud by day leading you every day. Yep, still me. I'm here now. So now when I provide meat and bread new each morning and evening, maybe now you'll realize I am your God. How about you? Has God showed up in your life recently? Have you seen God in the beauty of creation, the kindness of a friend, the nudging of the Holy Spirit, a truth revealed to you even in this message right now? Have you realized that you know that God is with you? And that if God, the almighty friend, provider, protector, healer, lover, hope, merciful is with you, that changes everything. In the wilderness of being stuck, we discover the only one who can change us so that we can be set free, and that one is God, always near. He doesn't have to strain to hear us. He welcomes our laments and our cries for help. And even if it's complaining, God listens. When no one else will listen to you, God is still listening. 
Moses has been making sure to tell the people, hey, this is not my problem. I didn't get you into this mess. Talk to the man upstairs. But even that doesn't faze God. God listens. He responds. Our prayers don't have to be perfect. Our faith doesn't have to be perfect. We just simply talk to God. Alice Wallace, I celebrated her life after her passing in December, and she had this wonderful little prayer. I just came again to tell you, Lord, how happy I've been since we found each other's friendship and you took away my sin. Don't know much how to pray, but I think about you every day. So Jesus, this is Alice checking in today. Isn't that a great, simple prayer? I mean, it's one of the pictures that we get of God just listening to us. And one of the pictures that I have of, of God in, in this moment that brings me comfort and strength in, in moments like these comes from Psalm 56, verse 8. The psalmist says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. Did you hear that? God not only hears me, God catches all my emotions, records them, holds on to them and redeems them, and returns those same tears now redeemed as a blessing into my life. This is a God who will not leave me stuck, but will come to me and rescue me. I don't have to do this on my own. That's a big deal when we're stuck, isn't it? When you're stuck, it feels like there's no way out, no one to hear, no one to rescue you. And when we're stuck, we feel like we have to do all the work of getting unstuck. And so we try harder and harder and harder. And sometimes it feels like quicksand. And the more we struggle, the deeper in we get. But remember God's response to our cries, I have heard you, I'll meet your needs. And then you'll realize that I am God, I am your God. I am all you need. But it's not always that easy. Listen for more as we turn into those uh, Israelites again. So that evening quail flew in, covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew all over the camp. And when the layer of dew had lifted, there on the wilderness ground was a fine flaky something, fine as frost on the ground. The Israelites took one look at it and said to one another, man who, what is it? They had no idea what it was. So Moses said to them, it's the bread, manna, bread God has given you to eat. And these are God's instructions. Gather enough for each person, about two quarts per person. Gather enough for everyone in your tent. Now the people of Israel reveal another truth about us, that when we're stuck, we don't always see the ways that God is providing to care for us. It may not look like what we always expect it to. The manna, the bread that God rained down didn't look like what they expected and it didn't come the way they expected it so they didn't know what to do with it. And even though God tells them what to do with it, we soon discover that they think that they knew better. They knew better than God how to get unstuck. They knew better than God how to escape their current situation. They knew better. And that's the challenge for us, isn't it? To trust God to trust that God will provide for us, even if it's not how we expected God to provide, or even if it's not how we expected God to show up, we still want to know we can do that. But our struggle is, is that we still want to do it our way, and we hedge our bets, just like the Israelites did. Here's how they hedged them. The people of Israel went to work. They started gathering, some more, some less. But when they measured out what they had gathered, those who gathered more had no extra, and those who gathered less weren't short. Each person had gathered as much manna as was needed. But Moses said to them, don't leave anything till morning. But they didn't listen to Moses. A few of the men kept back some of it until morning. It got wormy. It smelled bad. And Moses lost his temper with it but they gathered it every morning, each person according to need. Then the sun heated up and it melted. Did you hear that? Collect only what you need. Those were the instructions, pretty clear. Don't try to keep it for another day. Pretty clear, trust God that God will provide each and every day. It didn't matter. You know, they still want to do it their own way, but here's what God did. For 40 years, every morning and every night, God kept his promise. Can you, can I, can we trust God to provide for us? That's a hard truth. 
Maybe you have been like the Israelites and I know that God will provide, but I'm going to keep a little from back for myself, just in case. I know that's what he said, but I think I know better. Or maybe the way that God provides is not always what you wanted. Maybe, maybe it's not what you thought you needed. Remember the change that we need most though when we are stuck is not for our situation to change, the change is in us. Maybe how God shows up and what God brings is not what we expected. It's not, you know, it's not steak and potatoes, it's quail and manna. Maybe with a bit of humbling, maybe with a bit of changes to our lifestyle, God will begin to work that change in us, in you. God's provision and blessing doesn't always look like what we expect. I think of students who have gone on mission trips and, and some of the transforming things is not the work that they've done, it's whenever they hear the people that they're serving, the people they think that don't really have anything, the people that they think don't have anything to give thanks for even, and they hear them sing songs of praise and lift up prayers of praise and, and see how grateful they are to God and what unsticks those stuck students and allows them to embrace God, to say that God, you are my God, is praise. When those students see a people praising God in all circumstances, they begin to praise God. And when we're able to praise God in our own situations, we see them differently. We begin to see it for what it is and what it could be. And we begin to see with the eyes that God has in it. It changes everything. We begin to see hope. We begin to see God at work. We begin to see life in a new light and that changes everything. We see what God has done, what God is doing, and we realize that it's not our struggle that brings the bread of life into our lives, it's God. And the bread of life is not intended to be hoarded or saved for tomorrow, it's meant to be shared and eaten today. It's for today's needs. The Israelites ate the bread, the manna that God provided for them new each morning, and it changed their lives. We, we share the bread of life, Jesus, and he is enough for our needs today. We trust that God will provide, and Jesus does, and all things are made new. The eyes that are blind are able to see. What's dead is back alive. What once was lost is now found. What was stuck is now set free. When we accept that Jesus way of life, we discover life. When we insist on doing it our own way, we miss the glory of God, God that's new each morning and each night. We'll miss the beauty of the miracles of God. We'll miss the relationship of God. We'll miss the dependence that God brings to us. That's what God is doing in the wilderness. God says, I'll test them to see if they will obey me or not, so that they will see that I am God, they are God. Being stuck in the wilderness, we can discover the one who has always been there is all that we need. So how about you? Are you stuck at home, stuck in having your life disrupted, stuck and not being able to be with people that you want to be with and not be able to do the things you want to do? And in that stuckness, if that's where you are, are you still able to discover that God is there with you? Are you discovering that God loves you? Are you discovering to learn how to spend time with Him and grow in relationship with Him and become dependent upon Him? I wanna challenge you. The next time you're stuck, or right now, cry out to God. Just like the Israelites, God will hear you and come to meet your need. Listen and look for Him and then respond to what he says. Look then to see what God is providing for you right now. Maybe God's providing a friend, a scripture, a prayer, a nudge, a picture, a song. Maybe that's the manna, the bread that God is offering to you each day. Maybe you're finding it in one of our online groups or maybe you're finding it in one of our prayer times at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. Where are you finding that bread of life? And finally, when you're stuck, let God strip all those other things that you think you need and lean on Him and trust Him. Pray with me right now. 
Gracious God, we find ourselves stuck in so many different ways, but no matter where they are, you are there. Teach our hearts to stop struggling and teach us just to be open to your presence, to know that you are all that we need today. God, speak words of truth and hope and promise to us. Remind us again how much you love us and help us to lean in to you that we might find our way through this together with you into a life that is full and hope-filled once more. In Jesus' name, amen. so much for joining us in worship here today especially if this is your first time we're so honored and excited that you would come and join us and I quickly before we all go want to give us some next steps and the first would be this if this is your first time I'd invite you to fill out a connect card to, to let us know you were here uh, you can find it in our app on our website if you're on Facebook or YouTube you'll find it in the comments or on the bio but fill that card out and let us know that you're here. If you're worshiping with anyone, we would love to know that so we can follow up and walk alongside you on this journey. And if you're a regular, do the same thing. Fill out that card. Let us know you worshiped and let us know who you were with. And the second, actually, if you look into our app, you'll find right in the middle on the bottom of it, you'll see something called the weekly roadmap. And we would love you to utilize that as a way to Keep up with your spiritual life through the week to read scripture, to pray, to follow along with those people that are in community groups. Uh, but you can find that in our app right at the bottom. It'll say weekly roadmap. You can follow along with us and really practice your spiritual life the other six days of the week as well. And then lastly, I just want to quickly point you to some ways you can serve missionally in our church. Uh, Denise Spalding is our director of missions, and she has a ton of opportunities for us to be able to be the hands and the feet of Jesus here in our community. We want to be more than just a community that worships, but we want to be a community that is action-based. And so if you're looking for ways to plug in, ways to serve, even in this time of distancing, I invite you to give her a quick email and just find the best ways to keep up with what we're doing uh, and how you can plug in. Uh, but friends, we're so excited again that you joined us in worship, and we cannot wait to have you back here next week.